So while he was busy raping me, he was holding a knife like ah. this. Busy raping me. So there was this lady I was working with. Mm. Then she came at my place. No, today I see you born. So he's doing like this. Mm. He don't say any word. So then I believed that I have to say something even if he can kill me. Welcome to the Safe Space Chess Podcast with Madam Speaker. My name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. If you're joining for the first time, welcome to the family of healing, self love, and motivation. And if you're returning, thank you so much for the continuous love and support that you are showing me. A big shout out to Virtuous Indoni Lodge. Guys, when you see me glowing, it's because I sleep eight hours a day and I sleep right there at Virtuous Indoni Lodge. Please do check them out. A big shout out also to E2 Hair Studios. As you're seeing me looking like a wife, it's all thanks to E2 Hair Studios. A big shout out to Hydro Quench because as we are having conversations, you know, we get thirsty in between and the conversations literally just choke us and we need to take a sip. So thank you so much to Hydro Quench for, you know, keeping us hydrated. A big shout out to Crown Lioness. This beautiful dress that I'm wearing is a masterpiece from Crown Lioness. They keep dressing me and just keep getting better and better. So thank you so much. Last but not least, a big shout out to Send Studios. I always say, guys, that eh, Send Studios, we will exit here via a ganda ganda of a TLP because we are not leaving, because we feel at home. Anyway, without any further ado, we're going to go straight into our episode for today. Uh, we have a beautiful guest next to us. She has a life-changing story to share with us. I'm going to allow our guest to introduce herself, and then we get straight into the episode of today. Hello, my darling. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you, my sister? I'm well, thanks. Please introduce yourself to the people. My name is Nongweba Mulevazi. I am from Mafigem, but now I'm residing in Fochfell, in the west of Gauteng, mm. where I reside. Okay. Yes. How, how, how is life like in the west? I can say life is boring that side because of less opportunities. There mm. are no opportunities at that place, if I can say. You know, I always wonder when people are staying in places where there are no opportunities, ne? but I also come from a place where there's not a lot of opportunities. Mm. Why don't we want to move? We want to, just that on my side, I'm busy like building something, something mm. like an NGO. I'm running a nonprofit organization. So I just want to exit before I can, mm. like, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, yeah. but it's a new organization. So I just want to put more spices before yeah. I can exit. Yeah. Well, you need to take your time, you know, you know what, you will master yeah. it eventually. And when you do, it will be the right time for you to yeah. move, you know. So tell me about your upbringing. How was that like? My upbringing, I can say I was raised by my grandmom mm -hmm. while my mother was there. And I can say it was a lovely, it was a lovely upbringing because my grandmother had Utando. Okay. That one I cannot complain, but I used to complain about my mother because I felt that she's away, she's away. Mm -hmm. And while she's still yeah. in this earth, okay. that part on its own, like in Pulega Kulu, but I had to heal mm -hmm. as time goes because life is life. So what are the things that would happen when you were growing up that would make you feel like, oh, my mother is like distant. She's here, but she's not here. The thing is, my question was, like, my question was, how can my own mother decide to get married and leave me behind? Mm. That, like, it was a, a drift, if you can say, because now it affected me sure. a lot. Mm. And I believe that I, I, I didn't pursue some of the things that I wanted to I believe if she was right by my side, I would have done better things in my life. And was your dad in the picture? No. I just find out about my dad in 2022. Mm -hmm. But in the space of six months after finding out about my dad, he had to pass on. Sure. Yes. And it's, there's something funny about how people, when they find their fathers, after some like a few months mm -hmm. or so, they pass away. So to me, it feels like somewhere, somehow, maybe it's it's God's grace, you know, to say you I had to so. meet with this person before they could depart. And we didn't mean to just communicate telephonically. Mm -hmm. And in the space where we were planning to meet, that's when I received bad news mm -hmm. to say he's sure. no more. But I went to the funeral, mm -hmm. yes. 
You know, that is a gift that a lot of uh, mm. kids actually don't get, you know, from their parents. But there's one thing that I want us to go back to, ne? And I'm literally mm. just looking at the women at home looking at me right now. You guys are problematic. Mm. And this problem of us leaving our kids behind and choosing indoor over everything, it's a pandemic that has been going on for years and years, and years to come. And the, the thing that always frustrates me or makes me angry about this whole thing is that we don't learn. You know, yeah. we exit relationships and we say we're doing it for our kids. We enter into new relationships and we choose men over mm. our kids. And we never really go and look back and see the damage that was caused by us actually mm. leaving our kids behind to say, okay, what are the things that I missed out on? And so at the end of the day, we are not different to all these men who abandon their kids. If you're going to choose a new marriage mm. and compromise your child, because there's an episode that we had a couple of weeks ago where a lady was saying that, yeah, now her mom took her with, mm. but the stepfather was raping her. She fell pregnant. They had to abort. The mother could not leave the stepfather because, you know, usazo and yeah. also it's the second marriage. So women, <clears throat> like without a fail, we keep choosing men over everything, including our children. And it's True. something that needs to change, you know. But anyway, um, how has the healing journey on all of that been like for you? I believe now I am healed because I had to forgive her. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I had to forgive her. At first, I was bitter. I, was, I had anger. Mm. But I had, as time goes, I had to tell myself that do it for your mental health. Mm. Heal. Yes. So during that time when um, you are going through life having not healed, how did that affect your decision making and everything, like your life in general? It did, because during those times, I decided to relocate to Johannesburg because my aunt was staying there. Then I spoke to my aunt that I cannot bear the life that I'm living in my kin, so I want to relocate to Johannesburg. And in the space of four months, I believe, I met this man, a boyfriend, and at that time I was 19. Mm. I was 19, I met a boyfriend, and we fell into a re relationship but in a space of three months, that's when I, I saw flames. Sure. Because he didn't tell me that he's having another affair. What I know as a person is that she had someone, but they are no longer together. Me deciding to visit him, because we went to party, then after partying, we went to his place. And during the course of the night, there were knocks. Okay. And only to find out is the girl and the friend. And he could not open the door. Okay. But the lady, because he ha she had an access of the place, mm -hmm. she opened using her own key mm. and she entered the flat. Sure. And during uh, this time when there, there's this, whatever that's going on, what is he saying to you? Like, he's trying to mediate between me and the girl because immediately the girl entered the room he, she was already like having anger. Okay. I could see I'm there. She started fighting me. And the friend was busy boiling water to say, hey. you know, Yes. The friend saying that, No, we're not Utuba Malaba today. Hey, to then they burned the, they boiled the water, trying to burn me. Why can't they burn the guy who's the one who is very, I fibbing? don't, I don't know. So they could not burn me. Then they had an access to fight me, and while they were fighting me, busy fighting me, the other one opened a, a window. Then that's when they pushed me from sixth floor to ground floor. Ha. Yes. My sister. Mm. So, so these two girls actually pushed you from sixth, sixth floor. floor to the ground? To the ground. You are the same person who is sitting here? Yes. I'm the same person. How did you survive that? I don't know. I can say it's by God's grace mm. that um, I, I survived. Because I, I learned about my incident, I believe, after three weeks or four weeks in hospital. Because I can say there, were, there was no hope for me mm. at first. But because God is God, he restored my life. Though I was declared paralyzed and I got amputated, but... Okay, wait, I, I want you to take me through mm. everything. Mm. 
So the last memory that you had was when they pushed you out of the yes. window. Mm. Then from there, it's you waking up from the hospital. Yes. So what is the first thing that you 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 are aware of or that you see or that is happening when you wake up from the hospital? When I wake up from the hospital, like I became frustrated because the first thing I think Vula then I saw the this big machines mm. and I saw like in TMB, like I'm no longer myself. And now I'm trying to do something like that can harm me. Like the first thing came to me is that take your life. Mm. And when I turned my head, there was a plaque, that plaque, a plaque at the machine. Mm. So I wanted to switch off the machine and I did. Mm. But the nurse that was there, she came running and asked me, Wuti, what are you doing? And I said, there's no hope for me, look at me. Mm. That is the first thing that came to me, that take your life. Sure. And then now, the nurse, did she convince you not to do it? Yes, she did. <sighs> and how was the healing journey like? It was difficult now because I have to adapt mm. that I will never walk again because at that time I was not walking. Mm. I had to adapt that I had spinal injuries, my pelvic is not functioning, then I mm. no longer have a hand. So I had to deal with that every day. Mm. And for me, it was draining, I can say. So these, these two people who actually pushed you off the um, sixth floor, where, did you ever get justice? Yes, I did. I mm -hmm. think after two weeks, after my coma, I can say, mm -hmm. uh, the nurse that was in charge, then they called the police station. Mm -hmm. So the police officer came through for mm -hmm. me and asked questions. So at that time, at first that I could not remember, mm -hmm. but they gave me time. So then later on, I called them again. Mm -hmm. That's when I tell them, the whole story. Mm. So was it only the two ladies who were arrested or the guy as well? Or did he ever even try to come see you or anything like that? He tried to reach out, mm -hmm. yes. So, but then obviously he was not arrested because he is yes, not the one that did not, it. Yeah. Did you guys even reconcile after that? Like we did, but later when I decided that I'm exiting the mm. relationship. Sure. So, and then how is life like then after that, after the hospitalization, you being amputated and then you leave the hospital? Take me through that. Like, it was difficult because now, you know, I'm used to using two hands now. I have to adapt in using one hand. Mm. And again, things that were, things that people were saying about me, Remember, if you're from the village and going to Johannesburg, like they changed the whole story to say, no, she was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those things like they broke me. I don't want to lie. And I started like being someone that is in a shell, not wanting to come out because of the things that I was hearing on the basis, mm -hmm. even in my family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. So going back home was literally just a thing that you would not want to do. Yes. And your mom during this time? My mom was not there. My grandmom was there. Even the, even after you 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 had this accident that you had. Yes. I can say she was not there. Though she was calling and everything, but mm. the person who was there every day is my grandmom mm. and my aunt. Yeah. Sure. Hey, you know, I wonder, I wonder why women get to a point where they become so distant mm. to their children. And I think these are, there's a lot of stories of women who abandon their kids, even emotionally and, and otherwise, that we never get answers for, mm. you know, because we never question them to say, why, why would you be this type of a mother? But yeah, anyway, um, after that? After that, I went home to my feet again. Then I believe after two or three years, I decided to relocate to Fochville mm -hmm. because I wanted to study. I wanted to do nursing. Then I came this side in Fochville. Mm -hmm. And even in Fochville, I think after two years, I had this relationship. And sad part about this relationship, it was someone 
I was convinced because of we met at a church. Because so while I was at hospital, after the, restor the restoration of my life, after receiving healing, that's when I decided to receive Christ as my personal savior. Mm -hmm. So now in Forgeville, I went to church and I met this guy. After, I think, a few months we met and I was convinced because he was determined to say, I'm a born-again Christian mm -hmm. and I'm going to do a right thing. And the processes of Lobola negotiations were done, okay. but later on, the man turned into being a monster. After after he paid the lobola, yes, the them the mzalwan, the mzalwan. So what exactly? I'm so scared to even ask this because I know they're capable. Yes. Our we are very much capable. Mm. What what how in in which way did he did he turn into a monster? Like now he started like be moody, okay. and Kulimela is in them and trying to separate me from people that I was engaging with because obviously when he came to my life there were certain people like close friends mm -hmm. yes so she, he didn't want me to interact with anyone so he was isolating you yes he was isolating me then i decided to exit because now he started now a pagamisa is sand then it was a red flag then i decided i, I cannot stay in this relationship so so him um beating you up was like the, the last kick, it was like, okay, this is me exiting. It was your... Yes, I decided because of even before he slapped me, there were certain things that I can see that this man is capable of doing. Mm. So then I decided to exit. Then I requested that we part ways. Mm -hmm. And now he started stalking me. So he started stalking me. Mm. Then there was this day he came at my place and he broke my place. He took everything, my certificates, everything. Yeah. Like, and the same person is the one who calls one of my cousins using the private number to say, please tell Nongaba that someone broke the place. Only to find out it was him. Mm. And he also took my phone, the only phone that I was using. He took my phone. And when I decided to go and fetch my phone, I went with my cousin because I was scared of him. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, I will give my mother his, like a phone later on because I put it somewhere, not around my place. Mm -hmm. So later on when I came, that's when he started abusing me literally because now he wanted to give me my phone, but he didn't, it could not give me my phone straight. So at that time, Wama M Nyango then Wang Donza was okay today to grail. So he used the phone to abuse me. So that day he strangled me. Mm. And he said to me, I'm not going to leave you alive. Today I'm going to bury you. Ha. I'm going to bury you. So he strangled me and I went to a police station because someone, some lady who was passing by rescued me, mm. but I could not talk because it was severe. Sure. But just the justice was not on my side because when I went to police station, they said, no, it's your boyfriend. Mm. And I said to them, no, we're no longer having a relationship. Mm. So I opened a case. They could not assist me. They advised me to a protection order mm. of which of I done that. Do you feel like the justice system is really slacking when it comes to gender-based violence? True. It is. Sure. It is. So even after a protection order, he got his protection order, I got mine, and we were given a date so that we can go to court. Mm -hmm. Even before the day... He came at my place. Violating the protection order? Yes. Ivan. Then I was preparing myself to go to an interview to social development. Mm -hmm. So while I was preparing, he entered my place and he came with a knife mm -hmm. and said, to last you survived. Ha! But this time 
I'm not going to live a life. And he said to me, Kupa Oshobole. And now he's holding his knife. Otoshobola. So now I'm scared. I had to Kishobole. So while he was busy raping me, he was holding a knife like ah. this. Busy raping me. So there was this lady I was working with. Then she came at my place. No, today I see you born. So he's doing like this. He mm. don't say any word. So then I believed that I have to say something. Even if he can kill me, someone will be there to witness that. Mm. Then I started screaming. Then he started stepping me huh. while I was screaming. He started stepping me 11 times. Huh. Yes. Hi, Bo. True. So, so during this time when he's stabbing you and you are screaming and there's somebody who's out mm. there, did you get help from that person who was outside the door? The lady tried to help, but he was swearing to stab her. So in order for the lady to... What I can say? In order for the lady who Helena Askana affected of this, mm. she had to run away, mm -hmm. but she called the police. Mm -hmm. mm. So when by the time the police got there, what state were you in? Yo, it was blood all over. I could not breathe. Like, mm. yes. so you had passed out. Yes. So it it was another incident of you waking up in the hospital yeah. again. Because there was blood all over. Mm. It was eleven holes in my body. Mm. And then this time around, when you wake up in the hospital? This time it was different because it took only one day. Then I woke up. Mm -hmm. So then the people who came to visit me, they came because they received the SMSs from my phone because he took my phone again mm. and he sent SMSs to everyone that I know that, no, this time o'clock fits. So they came to check if really I am dead or not. So they found me alive. Wait, did did this man get arrested? Yes. Most, most in this in his head he was not okay, ne? I believe so. Because there's no way a normal person can really just try to kill somebody and then send a message to everybody to say she's really dead. He did. Hey, well. hey yeah. Ne? Anyway, um so now from the hospital, what happens? From the hospital. After I, being stabbed 11 times. I went home. Then it was that healing process. Then he was arrested. Okay. Then we undergo the process of going to court. Mm -hmm. Then he was sentenced mm -hmm. to 15 years. So did he actually do the 15 years or is he still in there? No, they give him a half because mm. they say in prison time Prison or time is, yeah. 15 is like seven and yeah. a half years. So he did the entire seven and a half? Yeah. Did he not try to reach out afterwards? He did. He sent me letters. He mm. sent me, like every month he will send letters. Mm. Saying what? Like asking me to come visit him. Like <laughs> serious. Mm. Yeah. Did you? No, I didn't. You didn't? No. No, the reason why I'm asking this question is because it's possible. No, There's I didn't. one previous episode that we did here where a lady was stabbed by her husband. The husband got arrested. The husband uh, after the after he did jail time, they actually got to, beg to they got back together, they fixed their relationship. And obviously, you know, it's not going to end well, but we are capable of forgiving mm. such as women. Mm. So that's why I'm checking with you if you also forgive such. No, no, I didn't. Mm. I didn't. Sure. And then now, life after that? Life after that, I think, I believe in 2013, then there was another pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know what? Sometimes I felt that I'm a case. But God forbid, I'm not a case. Mm. <laughs> like, in 2013, I had a baby. Mm -hmm. Then 
he passed on. He was never sick. He just cried, and I went to the doctor. When I arrived at the doctor, boom, he was dead. How old was the baby? He was two weeks. Ah. He was never sick. So during the process of your pregnancy, you never had any complications? Never. During the birth? Next. Where do you look to for answers after that? Sure. I was looking to God. I was asking God questions. And this was your first baby? No, it was a second baby mm. who also passed on. Okay, let's let's mm. let's rewind. Let's take it a bit mm. back. Let's start with the first one and the second one. The second one is the one who passed on the two weeks after birth. Okay. Then in the space of six months, then my daughter, the first one. Okay, mm. wait. The first baby that you had was from which relationship? Was it from the guy who, who stabbed you 11 times? No. The relationship with the guy, like in the process of me being hospitalized, mm -hmm. I was pregnant already, yes. The first one, the first child. Wait, the time when they threw you off yes. the... Yes. Eh? Mm. So you, so it's not only you who survived that sixth yes. floor. It's you and the baby. Yes. Okay. Well, that's why maybe you tried to even work things out after yes. you came back from the hospital and everything. Yeah. Okay. Now let's. Okay, we can fast forward to the time when you're saying six months in between. Six months in between after the death of my newborn baby, mm -hmm. then the first one she was ten years during grade four, she was sick. Then I took him to hospital. She was admitted. Mm. Then the doctors in Caltonville, they said they will transfer her to Johannesburg Jen. Mm. But during the process, she could not make it. Yo, my sister. She could not make it. Yo. And what, was, what, what did they say was, was, was the issue or the cause of death? The lung issue. She had a lung issue. Sure. How do you overcome all of that? How do you move on from that? Like, oh, you know what? I was frustrated. I had so many questions and everything. But in 2017... Okay, do you have tissue somewhere? You were saying you may proceed. Yeah, in 2017 or early eight, 2018, that's when I told myself that, you know, like, we are like Jehovah and give everything unto God. Because I believe that during the way, maybe I was not doing things accordingly. I, 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 I thought that to myself that maybe I'm not doing things accordingly. Mm -hmm. So now I started... Going back to God now. So what are the things, because I do believe that after a big blow like this or any other blow in life, when we sit and we self-introspect, there, there are things that we discover mm. where you can hold yourself accountable or you can just say, these are the things that I need to be learning from. What exactly is it that you needed to do differently for you to be able to overcome this? Firstly, like in terms of relationships, mm. then I told myself it's a stop now. I don't fall to any relationship mm. because I can count in all my relationship there are is, like there is a story to tell, mm. and all the stories are not good stories. Mm. Then I decided not to anymore. Mm. Then that's when I decided to just be myself without a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But in 2018, when I, I was restructuring my life, going back to God, then there was a restoration, and that came with a better relationship, and we're still happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Despite of my situations, despite of my background and everything, we are still happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. My sister, I want to I want to hear your your perspective of of restoration, mm -hmm. because I kind of have a similar story in a sense that I know how it's like to lose a child. My firstborn child, mm -hmm. I lost her, right? 
and I have two kids now after mm. that child. And uh, when I the 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 famous book of Job that we read in the mm. Bible about how Job lost everything and he was restored again. For me, a restoration hits differently, man. Ne? Mm. So I want to hear from you because I never look at my current children and see anything that reflects the child that I lost, right? And in my interpretation, maybe it's because I did uh, English second language. In my interpretation of what restoration is, it would be that water is water. Mm. When this bottle is empty, it will be filled with the same content. But when it comes to losing people, when you lose a child and you are being restored, it can't be the same content. When you lose a child, but you are being restored by a beautiful relationship, it can't be the same content. Mm. And so because of, of that struggle that I have personally as an individual, you know, because honestly speaking, I don't want to lie to you. In as much as I've also done my own work in terms of healing from the loss of my child, I still feel like, Mara, there's a space for a child of that nature that I once had. You understand? With the special children that I have now who are bringing their own uniqueness, but I still feel like, no, I see the restoration, mm. but it's not the same content which is in the bottle. It's different content. We appreciate it. So in your restoration and understanding restoration and making it work for you, how, how do you... How do you how, how 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 do you interpret it? Like for my daughter, I can say I have a, a four year daughter, four years daughter now. Mm -hmm. And when I look at her, I see my daughter, the one that is no more. Mm -hmm. And the characters, the wisdom and everything, I see her in so many things. Mm -hmm. So hence I Hence, I'm saying that to me is a restoration because I believe that God gave me the same okay. character as okay. that one. Okay. Yes. No, I think in, in your case, it's, it's a bit understandable. Mm. Um, so there's this other one that I want to hear from you, and it's the issue of um, just the loss of a child, right? Um, when I lost my baby, she was nine months old. There are people who feel like losing a baby while they're pregnant is more painful because they wish they could hold the baby for like two minutes so that they can get to meet the child. There are people who lost a baby, like a baby who is two weeks old. You, you can't even tell their character because mm. they're still small. But now there's a baby that you lost who was 10 years old. In your own uh, experience, does the pain even differ? Does it matter? Does it feel like, because that one I had her for 10 years and that other one was for two weeks, it, it hits differently or is it the same thing? Because I really want this to be used as comfort for people who, who, has, who have lost children in different ages and different circumstances. It's different because for this one, not to say that I didn't love him, I did love loved him, mm. but because of he was here in earth only for two weeks, I never had experiences with him. Mm. But this one, we had a long journey together. And she used to say things that even today they cut hip deep. If I see someone saying that I want to be this, then I remember her mm. to say, oh, my daughter. Even last week I was so emotional because I believed, I was talking to my cousin that you all, she was going to do a third year, and I know that she had wisdom. She was mm -hmm. brilliant and everything. And one thing about my daughter, if I go through stuff, she was the one who was saying to me, you know the principle of our home, pray. Mm -hmm. And she was that person who said to me, don't cry. God will see us through. Mm -hmm. Like I took her as an angel in my life because really she was that kind of a person I still remember even at the hospital when I went there to fetch her things. They were saying to me, you know, after you left on Saturday, because she wanted to go with me Saturday. Mm. And when I look at her, she was already healed. But we had to wait for the procedure to mm. unfold. But I could not listen to her when she was crying that today I want to sleep at home. I want to do this. Then I'll say to her, no, I'll come back to, like, 
I'll call my family and make them talk to her that no, tomorrow we are coming as a family. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out on that day she, is the day that she's going to leave this earth. Mm. Because they, they were saying that after I left, she started preaching to them, asking them about Jesus, like singing for them, inviting them to our church. Mm. Like, and after that, she requested to go and sleep because she was with them at the nurse station. Mm. But after that process, she went back to bed. That's when she left this earth. So with Bobo, I, I called her Bobo, it was different. Mm. That one it was, but the pain is not the same. Mm. Sure, sis. Oh, do you feel somewhere, somehow, along this journey, you blamed yourself, you know, that maybe if I had listened to her and taken her, maybe she would still be here. Did you ever struggle with self-blame? I did. Mm. And I'm still suffering on that, even today. Okay. Because in the process of healing, I can say there's no perfection. Mm. And on the other side, you'll be okay, but on the other side... It will always trigger. Mm. Um, so I always blame myself. Sure. But you do know that somewhere, somehow, eventually you're going to have to deal with this, just confronting the self-blame. Yes. I feel like I'm, 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 I'm struggling a bit. Maybe it's because I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in your situation. Yes. I feel like I'm struggling a bit in, in structuring the questions around this whole self-blame thing and taking yourself mm. out. So, firstly, I, I really commend you for your story. I think it's just so remarkable because in it, I'm, it's God. Mm. Everything that I'm, mm. like, what she's saying, I feel like it's God saying, I've got you. Like, you thought you were not going to make it, but I'm here. And then the second part is, did you, are you seeing someone in terms of, like, a psychologist, a therapist, in all of this because we as humans tend to take a lot and even put timings mm. of saying by X amount of date, I know that I should be fine or I will be fine, which is wrong because it should come as a journey mm. and um, know that you're speaking to someone about it. So are you, are you in therapies and psychologists and those type of things? Yes, I went through that process after the whole thing. But later on, to be honest, I decided to allow myself to, to heal. Mm. And I can say it worked for me, okay. even though I'm still struggling on this part. Not to say it's something that is happening every day, yeah, yeah. but something that will trigger if maybe I see her friends or if I see something familiar mm. to, to her. That's when I... But I believe, like, one step at a time, yeah. yeah. You know, because I always it, it 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 always becomes a problem for 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 one to comfort somebody who has lost a child because that's why I said in the beginning that somebody who has lost a child while they were pregnant or when when the baby was like two weeks old they'll be like oh God I wish I had had more time with this mm -hmm. child so that I can get to know them before you take that mm -hmm. child and then there's the situation where. You get to spend time with this child, and every every day, it's like you are living into the triggers and the like the reminders of what this child was. You are reliving, you're replaying everything, but at the same time, you are like, you know, right now she should be here. Mm -hmm. This is what she'd be doing, and the one thing that I always find working for me, it's just that now, honestly, I feel like I have really completely healed from that because I spoke about it. A lot. Um, being able to see kids who would have been the same age as her. Because I have a friend, my best friend's child should have been the same age as my son, my, my, my daughter. So even seeing the child and the progress she makes, it doesn't take me back there anymore. I literally feel like me being able to just speak about it, speak about it, speak about it, and be honest about how I feel about it. Like the way you are sharing right now to say, Sometimes I blame myself. Sometimes I just, mm. you know, because sometimes when we have other kids, we, 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 we put it right at the back of our minds and we pretend as if that child never happened. 
you know, which is something that I also did at some point. But hey, to heal completely, it, it, it's not... It's not that It's easy. not easy. Mm. And, and also because when you bump into people who have been through something similar to what you've been through, you kind of feel their pain. And because it's a relatable pain, it takes you back all the time. Mm. You get what I mean? So there's a story that you haven't touched on because you're asking me what's left. The 2016 story um, of severe bleeding. Can you please take us through that? Okay, in 2016, I went to work. Then after work, I was preparing food. Then I slept. Mm -hmm. Then during the night, I think around 9 or 10, I don't remember. Like, I have a woman in bed, and among beggar, it was blood all over. Then I called this guy to take me to hospital. When I arrived at the hospital, they wanted my doctor and his phone was off. Mm -hmm. Then we had to drive to this other hospital in Leslie William. And it was a, like I can say severe, mm -hmm. like it was severe blood bleeding. Then was it blood like your menstrual blood? Yes, okay. but it was a severe bleeding mm -hmm. with blood. Mm -hmm. Then this doctor said to me, maybe you are pregnant. Then I told the doctor that, no, I don't ha have any relationship. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. It's been years mm -hmm. since I, I concluded that I don't want any relationship. So he took some tests. Then they came out negative. Then I told him that, you see, I am not pregnant. It can be something. Mm -hmm. Then I was admitted. Then the blood was severe. Sure. Even if I got the injection and everything, but it was, I don't know, they, can, they could not control the blood. Sure. Then they said to me, no, the only person that can help you in this case is the doctor that will come on Friday. And I was there on Monday huh. night. Mm. Then it is Tuesday now. They say to me, I have to wait. Then the blood, like, give mm. worse. Then around three, then now I'm losing it. Like, I'm pale, very, mm. very pale. And I could not breathe anymore. And I still remember one of the family members was there, and the doctor said to them, no, you are not supposed to enter because now the situation is very serious. Mm. And when I see myself, I'm no longer breathing accordingly. There's machines. There's like, it's like it's worse. The mm -hmm. situation is becoming worse. And there's no help because the doctor is coming Friday. Mm. So one of these nurses that was there, because the doctors were saying that they don't believe that I will make it. Sure. Because I lost a lot of blood, mm. and I was yellowish mm. at that time. So this other nurse told one of my family members, why can't you request the doctor to transfer the lady to Lenmet Hospital? Then they called Lenmet Hospital. It was full. Mm. Then optionally they called Kruger's Dog. Like enough, there was someone who was willing to assist me. Then the process was unfolding for them to call the ambulance that will take me to Kruger's Dorp. Mm. But there was a delay. Now I am literally dying. <sighs> the ambulance is not coming. Since they called during five o'clock, now it's nine, I'm still there, I'm not breathing. They are using machines mm. in order to restore my my breath. Mm. So later on during, I think it was around 10 or 11, that's when the ambulance came. They, they took me to Kruger's Dorp. I'm not breathing. Like the situation is becoming worse. So when I arrived at the Kruger's Dorp, then the nurses there, they are telling the people that were driving the ambulance to say you are late because the doctor is already gone. Mm -hmm. for so He will be here tomorrow. Mm. 
So that nurse like called the doctor to say, the lady is here, what should I do? Mm. Then the doctor said, I cannot do anything because I have been waiting for them. Mm. So now I decided to go. I'll see, I'll see her the next day. Mm. Then the sister called, begged him on the call to say, please, can you prescribe something that I can mm. give her in the meantime? Mm. Because you're going to see her around six in the morning. So the doctor gave the sister an order to say they can give me something, and the sister did. Then I was admitted. I slept there. Around three, then I got my life back. Now I'm no longer breathing with that, those machines mm -hmm. and everything. Then the doctor came around six. Then he took me to theater. Then after that, I, I was okay. So what did they say was wrong with you? They said to me, I, it was an issue of a rectum. Okay. The time I was delivering my baby, because they asked me about the, the weight of the baby. Then I told, I told the doctor that it was 4.7. Mm. And he said to me, they were supposed to do a scissor inst instead of doing a normal birth. So that's when the rectum was... I don't know, it was loose or it was broken. Mm -hmm. So during the process, they booked me at the West Donald Gordon Hospital mm -hmm. to do a procedure. Then I went there. So, so these people didn't pick up anything during the birth of no, the child? they didn't. And how long did it take between the birth of the child and you actually getting to a point where you are losing your, your blood? How, how, how many... It was four years. So it's it's four years later after it, the birth of the yes. child that you are now yeah. having? After four years. And the symptoms were there, but I was not away. Oh. Because the, the first thing that the doctor asked me was, like, when you want to go to toilet, to the bathroom, do you want to, like, do you want to go fast or do you go relaxed? Mm -hmm. Then I will say, you know, every time I should run. And oh. that was the symptom because already the rectum was. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so it's literally like you feel it while it's very close. Yes. So you can't just be like. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And we ignore a lot of things because we don't know these things. Yeah, no, I didn't know. My sister wanted to have another baby. I think I've changed my mind. No, you must have a baby. A baby is a blessing. Hey, Jesus. After this, mm. sure. And then after you, you, you come back from the hospital, then everything is fine? Yes, I started going for treatment because after the process of Kruger's Dorp Hospital, then I went to vets. Mm -hmm. But the procedure, it was not done like immediately. Mm -hmm. I had to undergo the process of seeing the doctor, booking for the exact date for the procedure. Mm -hmm. Then I went and then it took 30 days in order for me to come out from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. I'm, a, I'm having a lot of thoughts, you know, because there's somebody very close to me who from time to time they'll bleed, like yes. same like periods that don't stop until mm -hmm. they become pale. They go to the hospital and they get the blood, uh, is it transfusion or what, mm -hmm. this English word that, that I don't know. So I, maybe these are some of the things that we should look into. Mm -hmm. ne? Yo. Okay, yeah, let's talk about life now. Like, these things have been depressing me. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the good side now. Um, life right now. Life right now is very good. I don't want to lie. Last year, as I was saying earlier, that uh, I have a non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. I am doing good on that part. Yet, I am not yet funded, but there is hope. What are, what are you focusing on? I am focusing on orphans and vulnerable children relating to my story. Okay. Because vulnerable children, some of them, their parents are still there. Mm. So now I'm advocating for them, making sure that they are on the safe space. Mm. So what I do, I do a, a literacy program. So on that part, we, had, we have book clubs, we do reviews and... We also have the spelling bee competitions and public speak 
public speaking competitions. Mm. I'm collaborating with the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture for these programs. Mm. Then on the other one is the psychosocial support mm. because most offense they don't undergo the process of counseling or support groups. So we have that program and we are graced by a social worker and that is full time in our organization. Mm -hmm. She's registered paying the cancer. So she she's doing all that because she's trained for that. Mm -hmm. And we also have the HIV and T B prevention. Those are the programs that we are and I'm currently doing for the my community. community. Yeah. Yes. Do you, do you sometimes feel like, okay, now I understand why God has been saving me over and over and over again? Like, this is this is why. That, that part I know. Mm. Because I think God has saved me three times. I think, no, it's four times. Mm -hmm. Because of, there was this one of, four, like, the car accident I didn't mention. Mm. Like, several times. But one day, my story is long. Mm. But one day I'll have time. And, sure. Yes. So no matter God has really saved, mm. say, saved you for a purpose. And also when you look at the things which speak to your heart that you want other people to heal from, mm. I don't think you, you would pour your heart in it if you didn't go through it. Yes. You know, so the fact that you know exactly how it's like to be in that position is probably the reason why it drives you to wake up every morning and say, I still want to do this. I still want to yes. do this. So sometimes, you know, Vazalwan, in as much as we say, you know, life is not fair, life is painful, some of these painful experiences are so that we can be the, the, the mouthpiece of God to True. be able to save the people of God from whatever that they're going through. So, uh, before I wrap it up, Vazalwan, over there, the Vazalwan is the beautiful ones. It gets. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I want to go back a bit um, yeah. to when they told you that you were paralyzed, you know. There's so many, I believe there's so many people out there who were told that they are paralyzed and some of them, they start losing hope. Like, what gave you hope? What kept you going? And did you ever f foresaw yourself um, getting up and getting to use your legs again mm -hmm. and things like that? Um, I just want you to unpack that a bit so that you can give someone out there who's watching this podcast and they're about to like give up and also just tell their minds that it is done. Mm. So I just want you to unpack that a little mm. bit on how you managed to get up and how your mental health was like at that time. So yeah. Okay, on that case, like to be honest, uh, I didn't have hope. Mm. I don't want to lie because at the hospital, they told me that they're going to move me to Kensington Clinic. Mm -hmm. And it's where the disabled people are staying at. So sure. now my grandmom was supposed to come and sign the consent to say I have to stay there. Mm -hmm. And during the course of my stay in hospital, I can say God was there, mm -hmm. but I was reluctant or I can say I was rebellious. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to listen to God or I was bitter or I was anger. But uh, I was in a point of saying all these things happened while God was there. Why should I? Mm -hmm. I had that thing because I had opportunity of giving my life to God mm -hmm. while I was at hospital. Because I remember when I go to theater, every time there was this lady and every time when I go to theater, I w this lady's there, will ask me about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell the lady, no, don't tell me about Jesus. She was there. He was there, in fact, when my mom decided to reject me. Mm -hmm. He was there when I got pushed. So what's the use? Sure. Then he didn't, she didn't give up. Mm -hmm. Then one day she gave me this book. And when I read the book, it was a New Testament. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, you must read this book while we are sleeping there. Then when I arrived at my ward, I took that book and I threw it away. Mm. Then I think after three months or, or, or approaching four months, because I think I stayed four months in the hospital, there was this man. Because on Friday, 
that's when the doctor said on Monday, you, we are moving you to Kissington mm -hmm. Hospital. Then Saturday, Sunday, around 7, I believe there was a visit, this pastors that are praying in the mm -hmm. hospitals. Then that, that pastor came straight to me and says to me, God has sent me to you. Today, you, your life had to be restored. Sure. Then I told him, please don't tell me about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm what I am. He was there, so I don't want anything. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, this is the assignment and specifically for you. You can see that you are for in this world, but Mujim wants me to pray for you. Then I put him away. Then my puma mom yango. Then in one day I met him busy. Then I'm busy. I'm at him. Can you come? Then he asked me, Do you know about Jesus? Did you receive Jesus as your personal savior? Then I asked him, How do you do? How do you come about that process? Then he said, Just confess your sin. Then after that, you receive your healing. Today, mm. you are going to be healed. Sure. Then I said to him, okay, in that case, we can pray. Mm -hmm. Then we prayed. And I felt something moving in my body. Sure. Though there were whispering voices that says, no. Then he said to me, can I wash your, 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 your legs? Mm. Then I was, I don't know. I'm not using water, but the Holy Spirit says to me, I must wash your, 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 your feet. Mm -hmm. Then I allowed him, and he said to me, you can pray with me as I pray for this water because you have doubts. Mm -hmm. Then we prayed together, and he begins to bath my feet. Mm -hmm. Then after he left, he said to me, you are healed. Then he left. Sure. Then during the night, obviously those voices that uh, you are deceiving yourself. Mm, the doubt. The, those doubts. Mm. Then I battled with that the whole night, but around four or five in the morning, that's when I had that leap of faith to say, you are healed. Mm -hmm. Then I called one of the nurses and said to the nurses, today I want to go to the bathroom because usually they will do everything in bed mm -hmm. while I'm lying on the bed. Mm. But that time I said to them, I want to go to the bathroom. Mm. Then they said, you are not fit to can walk for yourself. And I requested, Uti, how about you balance me? Mm. And he's, she said, no, the doctors are going to be crazy at me because you are not supposed to, because mm. you have the spinal injuries and you just waiting for your wheelchair. Mm. Then I begged the woman that, please, let's go. Mm. Then we went to the bathroom, and I said to the lady, you can go. In fact, bring me something. I want to balance myself. Mm. No, we can't. God, please trust me. I just want to do this. Mm. Then she went and gave me something, and I said to her, no, I'll walk for myself. Then I started walking sure. that day. Sure. Then when the doctors arrived around nine, doctors rounds, now I have to go. Then I was brave to say, I am not going. Mm. I am healed. Then the doctor said, no, not in your position. Then mm. I said, I am healed. Mm. If you don't believe me, try me and keep me for two weeks. Then you, you'll see the miracle. Mm. I am healed. I don't need to go there anymore. Mm. Yes. Yo, that's a powerful testimony right there. Yes. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Shoo. Yes. It was a, a miracle for me and for someone who didn't believe that mm. God exists. I, honestly, like I had doubts because of the things that were happening. Mm. But God came through for me. And also because you were angry at God because, I mean, you've been watching me going through all these mm. things, you know. Sure. Thank you, Zintle. Shout out to you for that question. I, I believe it's going to change mm. a lot of lives out there. You know, it's going to restore a lot mm. of people and just their hope and trust in God. So, yo, sis, hi. <laughs> 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 yeah, ne. 
And mm-hmm. here we are now, um, in closing, where do people get a hold of you? Is there any other question that I'm leaving, guys, because I really don't want to deprive people of God? Are you crying, my sister? <laughs> <laughs> that was a cry don't baby. Cry. We have another, another ghost lady there is a cry baby. <laughs> don't cry, you <laughs> <laughs> it's like you would say love. Um, where do people get a hold of you? The type of help that you think you you would need for the NPA that you have started. Um, how can people get a hold of you, reach you, and be able to offer you the help that you need? They can reach me. We have a Facebook po- page. Mm-hmm. The name of the page is New Revelation Teen Slap mm-hmm. slash New Revelation Children's Hope. Okay. Then in Twitter, we are New Revelation. Then in Instagram, New Revelation. Okay. Then YouTube, New Revelation, Children's Hope. Then you also have the website, just www.newrevelation.co.za. Mm. Yes. Razalani, you hear that that is definitely what you need to be investing in if you want to... I agree. Some of you, you don't want to pay your tithes and offering at churches because there are people who are needy out there and they actually need that. So this is exactly where you need to be planting your seed, okay? Because this is for the good work of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, in closing, what would you like to, the, the, the short message that you'd like to share with the people out there? What I can say to people um, is that there is hope. There's always hope for the hopeless. Mm-hmm. And I am remembered of the scripture in the Bible from the book, New Revelation. Not New Revelation. New Revelation is, I'm obsessed. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Is it, what is this name? The last one? Revelations. Revelations, Yes. (laughs) Chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Look, I stand at the door and I knock, and whoever that will open the door for me, I will be able to dine together with them. Mm. So in a nutshell, as Abandwanabaga and Gulungulu, we have an opportunity to dine together with Jesus. Mm. And we have an opportunity to can reason together with Jesus. Because I don't believe that you can dine and in the process of you dining with Jesus, then there are no conversations. Mm. Conversations are there. We need to use the opportunity because he's always there listening to us. He's God of his promises. Mm. If Mudim I say, at the right time, I God, I will do it. Mm. We need to be patient and we need to believe in his promises. Sure. And we need to be reliable to God. Yes, mm. we, pain is unbearable and tribulations are unbearable, but in that process, let us learn to trust in the, prom- the promises of God we need to reflect to reflect back mm. to say in your word you said mm. you need to highlight that every time when we pray we need to highlight that when we have this kind of conversations that Jesus is saying God is saying yeah. in that case we'll be able to be restored because mm. we need him mm-hmm. because we are guided by him and to what I can say again, because the process has made me to become a disabled. I'm presenting a, a, a dis, disability community. Mm. There are certain people who say, I cannot go out there. They are ashamed. Well, they have shame. They are not willing to be seen. They don't want to come out of their shell. Mm-hmm. I want them to look at me. I was not born like this, mm. but I had to adapt. And they are... There are opportunities out there for people such as them. So they need to trust on themselves, believe on themselves. As I'm standing here, last year I won the awards. I was presenting like our, 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 with the category of, of positive role model. Mm-hmm. So it is possible. So they just need to come out of their shell because people are out there. Wisdom is there. Everything is mm-hmm. there. But they don't want to be seen. They don't want to go out there sure. so there is hope oh thank you so much my sister mm. yo thank you so much i feel like this is going to be one life-changing episode where a lot of people are just going to reflect in a lot of areas of their lives one small here and there all of a sudden you say god is not there hey people have come back 
or out of things mm -hmm. that are way too big, things that are literally impossible for other people to come out of, and they still declare the name of the Lord to say God is there. So if whatever it is that you are facing right now, you feel like, I, I can't feel the presence of God, man. I feel like God has neglected mm -hmm. me. As uh, my sister is saying here that, listen, opportunities are always there. You just need to knock and then you will sit and you di you dine with Christ regardless of what challenge that you are facing in your life. With that being said, I have to love you and leave you. Um, yeah, a big shout out once again to E2 Hair Studios for my hair. A big shout out to Crown Lioness for my dress. A big shout out to Hydro Quench for the water. A big shout out to Virtuous Indoni Lodge, a place where we sleep peacefully. A big shout out to send studios our home where we tell these beautiful stories, these life-changing stories. So many lives are being touched and they are being turned around for the better just because we are at home here where we are. So with that being said, thank you so much, guys. I'll see you on the flip side. God bless you. Mwah.